parents. Um, but, you know, I, ideally you're given the freedom to kind of plot them out as you see fit. Um, what I'm wondering is like, so, so take that, that door example, for instance. Um, I guess the question I'm trying to ask here is how do you decide what to show in how many panels um, to make to make this easier to explain with with the door example like so you chose to show the door and the bell ringing as he enters um, and then from there it's like he's uh, he goes right up to the counter like hello sir um, but there's like other other options, right? Like he, you could show a close up of his feet, like crossing the boundary or something like that. You could throw in more panels of like what's uh, inside the shop. So, very long story short, <laughs> how do you prioritize what to show? Like, how do you decide what's the most important information for the audience to have, and what's kind of just fluff or decoration that isn't needed so i'm just pulling up the script that here to sense. see what <laughs> i specifically wrote because so essentially how our um our system goes is mars writes the script with the dialogue gives certain sort of like either scene you know notes or sort of like stage directions of what she's imagining while she does this and then i essentially go in and i write out panels specifically because the the main reason for that is to know where we have to cut it off because otherwise it would go on forever no <laughs> literally we once judge. ended up with an entry with 60 panels yeah and it, uh, was it still technically not... has 60 panels because it was just redrawn um but yeah it's a very long one uh which is double the length of our normal one which is interesting because usually 60 panels 60 to 70 panels is how much they require a um a original, a webtoon original to have per weekly upload, uh, and I think I would want to die. So, um, yeah, we, we average about 30 panels per entry, um, give or take a little. Usually it ends up being a little more just because during the paneling process of actually like drawing it, I usually start adding some more things uh, based on vibe. But I'm just trying to scroll here to see. How to get the right part. <laughs> Always very important. Okay, so I think the, the, and again, I will say the script from what I write panel wise in, uh, in the script does change relatively drastically, um, for this sort of thing. This actual whole scene was originally paneled to be like him packing a suitcase, uh, but I sort of changed it to very focus on the objects themselves because that felt very important to me what is he bringing instead of just clothes right everybody brings clothes but mm -hmm. what are the other items that he's bringing that was sort of like the way for me to tell him he kind of doesn't know what's going on but he's also kind of a scientist he's bringing a compass a, a pocket watch you know um this sort of thing but then when he picks up the ball and cup game and being like mm, i don't know you know that he's kind of a little disorganized still somehow uh, he might bring things that he doesn't necessarily need um but so the biggest thing, and, and this is what I, I, you can see in the panels here, is that it's a change of scene, right? So, uh, and I can show a different example in a second, but so here you can see two changes of scene, right? We have, he's still at the desk, he puts the notes in his bag, and he sort of gets out the change, but we change scene here. You can see even the background is a change of scene uh, with all of this, There's sort of a gap here that shows Good night, Scarecrow. No, oh, thanks for hanging night, out as Scarecrow. long as you can. We're but, always uh, appreciative of having you. Yes, and if you can come back, great. If not, you know, have a good time. We'll see you next Sunday, the 30th. In a week. <laughs> yeah. For another comic quarter, so it'll exactly. be a very good so time. It works out. It works out. Um, but then, you know, this is sort of just outside. So the biggest thing to me was showing where he was, right? What mm. he was doing. And so that is very encompassed to me that he's entering from outside. The bell jingle opens. And that's something you, you think about when you watch, you know, an animation or live action or movies. It's very like that bell jingle opening the door to a shop is like very indicative, right? It, a it's a thing. recognizable symbol that everyone knows what it means. And the final thing with that is that 
I didn't picture him when doing this timidly entering the shop. I mm. envisioned him timidly interacting within the shop. So to me, the bell just, the, the door just opening and the bell jingling was just, he enters the shop, right? There wasn't a, a lot of sort of hesitation there or anything like that. It wasn't a big moment of him entering the shop. That was not the big deal, him crossing the threshold. The big deal is his interaction with Olus later. Now there is, I'm just gonna close all these so my computer doesn't wanna cry. And um, <laughs> too late. It will, it will cry. But there's an, an an entry that's not out yet, but a relatively rec one I recently finished. I think it's this one. It is this one. In this one, and of course it's not the one that I have chosen to open there. In this entry, uh, essentially, uh -huh. Hotson's being given a room to sleep. And so unlike the shop, um, we have the door opening. We have, actually, it's Sinnet opening the door because it's not Hotson entering, but it is a big deal of him entering the room. So like you said, I did zoom in on his feet stepping through the threshold because it's like yeah. a, it's a new sort of like, um, uh, Area? like experience, right? Like, like, like he's uncertain, you know, him after being so timid this whole time in this new place, taking a step into this room, you know, sort of like mm -hmm. being given quote unquote, this room, uh, is sort of an important moment of him sort of like going in and accepting it and being kind of comfortable. Uh, it sort of parallels those times when he like reaches for the ladder and then doesn't, right? You know, those are all sort of like, he's timid about interacting within this space. So to me, the, the stepping through the threshold was the important part versus the sort of the bell gives a, what is this threshold, right? Like I've already established what this threshold is, you know, Senate showing it off, you know, this sort of thing, a room, we sort of have some context from before of like, come with me, la la la. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of important for the stepping through of the, the room to be that sort of thing. Okay, and, and that makes a lot of sense because depending on what emotion, what you're trying to accomplish with the scene will determine what gets prioritized in the panel exactly it has a lot to do with the mood it has a lot to do with exactly you know the feelings of the characters involved right I, I guess you can think about it as you draw importance to the things that the character would also deem important right mm -hmm. so to Hotsin, him stepping through the door is kind of a big deal Right, him going into this space that he's given on his own, like this is kind of a big deal to him, right? Like he feels like an outcast, he feels like he doesn't really want to interact with these people. Him being sort of given this space of his own is kind of like this whole new experience and, and vibe shift to him. Versus entering a shop is kind of average every day. It's his interaction with the shop owner, Olus, that is the <laughs> the sticking point. That, that makes it stand out. Right, so that's sort of the difference there. Oops. I see. Uh oh. It's just uh, hitting chords and stuff. Ugh. Too many chords. All the chords, all the chords. Are there any other questions, Mars or chat? Let me think. Uh... Or about, you know, the drawing process in general. It doesn't have to be specifically paneling. <laughs> So I'm trying to think, because there was a question I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> uh, you can try, it's and I could try. I could certainly try. So, okay, okay. So you talked about creating a mood or creating an atmosphere um, when it came to, like, prioritizing the panels. Um... One of the things that I, I've seen across multiple mediums, um, not, not, not mediums, mul multiple comics, like from Webtoon to like classic superhero comics, is how they capture movement. Because that can be really hard to capture in a still image. Um, and some artists use the 
panels to their advantage. So like, I'm thinking of like classic superhero comics where it's like maybe you have three panels like almost layered on top of each other. So it's like almost almost like the character is moving through those panels themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or sometimes you have like the character on one panel and then in the panel right next to it, like that's where their fist is. So it's almost like they're punching through to get to the villain on the next panel. Um, so like, so like stuff like that, have you come across an instance where you've had to do that? Or, or if you had to do that, what would your preferred method of illustrating movement be? So the biggest benefit to the infinite scroll style comics is the vertical aspect of it, right? So very early in the original, uh, first, second and third uploads of the comic, um, I utilized it a lot more. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the only thing you have to worry about with that specifically is that it does take up a lot of space and thus takes up a lot of time. And this is something I forgot to mention with the panels. The larger the panel uh, uh, takes up on the page, the longer someone's going to spend looking at it. Right. So uh, you can see here Hotson's panel being smaller than this Ferrix panel being, you know, or this very full big one, you know, these sizes... The smaller ones, much less time spent viewing them versus the much larger ones is, well, a little bit of time comparatively to how long you spend drawing them. It's still longer that someone's going to spend on this one, especially in a vertical scroll format, because if you think about it, you have to scroll through this whole thing. You're forced to spend a lot of time on this one. Same with if a, a panel in a comic is actually the entire page. Right, you can see that uh, utilized very well in the Adventure Zone comic books, um, you know, uh, graphic novels. They utilize that very well to set the scene, but that forces you just, excuse me, physically to spend more time on it, right? So that is sort of how all that works out. Um, I lost the thread a second, give me a second <laughs> to get back. <laughs> no uh, worries, no worries. The question was... The uh, the the question was about how you would illustrate movement. Oh yeah, in yeah, your yeah. own comic. Okay, like, so so, you so had the to problem with how making would you illustrate it... that quick movement? So the problem with making using that vertical scroll is that that is a very long time right spent on mm -hmm. that movement, which in quick movement things is not really good. I would use it in sort of like a. Hotz, you know, it was originally a Hotz and dropping his bag was kind of like a slow mo experience. Like it would be something that I could see animated in slow motion as like a exaggerated thing. So that's why it would be good to utilize that vertical scroll. But in other cases, I sort of used it kind of gimmicky wise, and so I'm glad they're sort of gone now. To mm -hmm. animate quick movement, uh, to animate to to show quick movement in a comic, I mean, it's, it's kind of animation. Yeah, <laughs> I think the best one is from one of the more recent uploads. I think it's this one. Nope. It's this one. We'll open all of these so I can find it no matter what. <laughs> and then figure it out. Okay. Okay, here's, here's a good one. There's a lot of movement in this, right? We have him, Milano putting his hand on his shoulder, whatever this. Hotson's turn, right? Now, this is not a, a big, exaggerated movement like, say, you were talking about punches in the comics. It's a quick little, he's moving out of the way. That's where these sort of, like, action lines come in, these sort of movement lines come in. You sort of get this uh -huh. idea of motion here. Uh, you know, giving his hair movement, you know, where it, like, stays a little longer, stuff like that. But then when you have these, like, very important quick movements, you can see here, Milano reaches his hand to the left, and then pulls him to the right. So as you can see, what I did is that as you came down, the panels moved from left to right a little bit. So that's sort of showing what you were kind of talking about a little bit, where the punching like through the panels sort of vibe, where they're punching from left to right, the panels go from left to right, um, that sort of thing. That's probably one of the bigger ones there. Um, okay. I think that the biggest thing is how incremental the movement is right so as you can see this was this was very important you know this sort of this was sort of a rather 
a uh, rough motion, right? He's like, come here, you know, tell me what you found. I'm excited. Like, get over yeah. here, you know, like, why are you pulling away? Him over. You know, come back. And so that is a relatively big movement versus Hotsun sort of moving off to the side here and just sort of turning his body is kind of a relatively small movement. That's not the main part of this panel, right? It, it's part of it, but it's also his expression and it's also like, you know, all this sort of stuff. The, t you know, the noise and everything like that. It, it's sort of all in there. Um, mm -hmm. Another one you can see is, uh, Ferrix will be a good one in a second, but I'm trying to find. Yeah, here, here's another good one. Hotsun has his hand up here, and then in, again, a relatively similar sized panel, similar pace, but kind of moved off, he moves it with those action lines. So, because he's moving a lot while he's saying it, there's gonna be more panels, right? Versus when he's, just like there might be more frames in a, in a animation. Um, mm. That's sort of how you get that, versus smaller movements don't necessarily need those sort of big, uh, big separate panels, right? You know, you can get a shrug out of just looking at this, right? You can get a like, whoa, whoa, hold up sort of out of looking at just one panel. He's not gesticulating so, wildly. It's kind of like you don't need to drag it out. There's no reason exactly. to. It can just be one quick panel and exactly. it keeps the momentum going as well. Um, Ferrix is probably the best one. And now honestly, there's none. I don't think any of the not too many of them are like finished that I can think of. Oh, maybe there are some, but off the top of my head, I don't know where they are. But essentially, <laughs> Ferrix gets a lot of panels while he's talking and, and a lot of like body shot panels, right? He's never full body, but he's usually half body. And this is because Ferrix constantly moving around. Ferrix does not sit still. Ferrix is moving in his chair, turning around, flipping upside down, flipping right, right side up, doing all this stuff. So comparatively to sort of any other character in that in an entry, Ferrix gets more panels because he's just mm. moving around so much, right? I think it's in... And you need to dedicate time to showing that. Exactly. Is it this one? I think it's in this one. So we're gonna find out if I am correct or not as I take a sip of water. <laughs> Get your water. Don't dehydrate. Delicious hydrate. water. Okay, it is mm. this one. I was wondering how you kept that water cold if it's sitting right next to your desk. Uh, I mean, I don't like to drink cold water. I like to drink room temperature water, but room temperature water is still oh. colder than body temperature, so it's still, like, physically cold compared to, like, my mouth. Okay. <laughs> The more you know. Cause I, I, so I still find it refreshing. Well, cause your inner body temperature is like 90 degrees. Hello, PCM. Welcome back. It's like 90 hey, degrees. Hey, PCM. Pretty, you know, quickly, immediately in your mouth versus room temperature is like 67 degrees. Mm -hmm. So definitely and, makes a difference. And on top of that, the water is still going to be slightly colder than the room because of water specific heat and all that sort of stuff. So. To me, room temperature water is the best water because you can absorb it in your body faster, but it's still cold enough to be refreshing because warm water is ah. weird. I don't know why. Warm water is weird. You really have it all figured out. Oh, of course. I, the I power of science. Because of stream, I drink way too much water now. Not too I don't much think water. that's bad. It's thing. not too much. I just say too much. It's more than I ever used to. Except in the Honestly, water, though, outside. same. Just like, wow. No, I seriously, for, for Ace Attorney, I have a <laughs> water bottle that has like two and a half glasses of water stored in it, plus three separate glasses of water. Now <laughs> that's impressive. Now, do I use them all? No. But if I don't have that, I know that I will need more water than I'm prepared for, so I'd just rather have more than not enough. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it definitely the doesn't why hurt. I don't need water breaks is because I keep all my water. Now, honestly, the reason I keep all my water is because I'm so lazy that even if I'm really thirsty at night, I mm -hmm. won't make myself go up and go downstairs to get water. I will, <laughs> I will attempt to drink out of an empty glass multiple times and still not go oh and get it. Oh my god. It's, I'm bad. I, I'm bad. You really are. Jeez. I'm very bad. But uh, back to... Uh, 
action, right? So we have um, sort of we have a lot of Ferrex moving here, right? So he's he's leaning back in the chairs and he's flopped onto the ground. He's up, you know, we can tell he's upside down because of Aster's feet, uh, you know. This is another interesting one. There is a subtle movement here, yet I put uh -huh. three panels in it, and this is because it's a an important detail in my opinion to show. Essentially, what is happening here is Aster is saying, "Chill out, Ferrix. You can wait. You can have patience." And then he taps his leg, right? And so that's what it's showing in three panels. I show tapping his leg wow. up and down. And then he's like, I'm annoyed. Even I can't wait. Like, even I, the calm yeah. guy, are on edge because of this. Right. So this is an important so sort of little his actions movement. are not quite aligning with his words. Exactly. He's like, he's just as nervous as Ferrex. He's just not showing it as obviously. Uh, another good example of multiple panels is... So we have Ferrex has now totally flumped down in the chair, right? From just his head <laughs> hanging off. His back and torso is now on the ground. Now, uh, for everybody out there, what's very funny, almost all of these funny Ferrex poses, this one where I'm leaning back, this one with his head, you know, with his arms on the ground, this one with his body on the ground, um, are from references I took of Dylan doing these exact poses for me. So had, just, just had have to that be done funny IRL. Mode. Yeah, they're very hard to pose for, and you can't... Okay, I gotta tell you, I would pose for everything myself. However, it is much more difficult to instruct someone as how to get the angle you want to view them at by taking a picture than it is to tell them how to pose. Isn't that mm. weird? I could tell Dylan, I sit in a chair backwards, that. hold the back of the chair, and lean back, and then I can be like, okay, and I want it from this angle click you know fall off the back of the chair you know back on the ground legs up in the air and you know he could do that but then to say i want it from above i want it from below i want it from this caddy corner angle right i that that's so hard to say because i can't even see the picture that they're taking while they're taking it i just have to like Except. That's just the worst thing about taking pictures in general. So I'm very happy to have a, a loving and understanding boyfriend that is also very flexible like Ferrix. So <laughs> it works out. It's, uh, sometimes stars just it's, align, it, you, you know? know? It's funny. Well, well, Dylan probably has the most personality-wise in line with Milano. He definitely has Ferrix's body type. So, you know, it just works out. This works out. I, I, he had did JoJo poses for me once yeah. at college. The, the personality of Milano, the flexibility of Ferrex, the height of Aster. <laughs> He's not that tall, but <laughs> but no, Speak I had for him yourself. do. Okay, Aster Aster is higher than Fuel is taller than Fuel King Mars. <laughs> That's hey, tall. You, you gotta remember, everybody looks tall. I to know. Me. I know. Uh, Dylan is technically, I think, shorter than Milano's height. Yeah. Really? By one inch. Yeah, by one inch. Oh my He's sad God, about it. We made them giants. <laughs> well, you know, you remember why we made them giants. Oh no, I remember. I just forgot how giant we made them. <laughs> They're not giant to me. I'm taller than Hudson. You're not. I am. <laughs> so very fun Hudson's stuff. Hudson's the smallest of the group. Hudson's the smallest of the group. I'm taller than Hudson. You're God not. God damn it. I think if I remember correctly, Sinnet is taller than me. I think Sinnet is Dylan's height. I feel like I remember that being that way. God. But, uh, so another interesting one here is is these two panels are nearly identical. However, they show one important thing. This is Ferrex looking at forward at the camera, looking at, in my opinion, presumably Aster. I hope that is clear, because <laughs> he walks yeah. in this way, and so it makes sense that way. But he then he looks to the side, because now he's looking at Milano, who had started talking in this one, right? So that's sort of an important, it's a little movement. His expression changes, his eye, you know, position changes, but that was important sort of to, to sort of show that mm. now he's paying attention over here. A new person has arrived and all this yeah. sort of stuff. 
Um, and that's why it was significant to include. I think we'll, we will have to see, because there is action in the comic eventually. Like, like hard action, I guess is the best word to say. Um, and I will probably have to do a little more quote unquote research. And by that, I mean just going to the comics that I know that I enjoy that have a lot of action in them and being like, mm, how did you do this? How did you do that? And figuring that out. So I won't say I'm particularly versed in that aspect yet. Don't be reading the words, PCM, and then there's no spoilers. It's just art. Otherwise, Comic Corner is all spoilers if, if you're reading the words. You know, I, I'm drawing the freaking comic. <laughs> there's not much I could do. Uh, oh, are you saying spoilers about the action? Uh, come on. It's pirates. You didn't expect there to be action? Yeah, yeah, I see now. I there, see now. there was Come always. On. If you be didn't action. expect it to be action with a pirate base, I almost said then we did our Come job on. wrong. Then the job has gone wrong. Yeah, Hor horribly awry. An event. There was happen. gonna be action. Indeed. We got a freaking military in our comic. Yeah, technically we haven't introduced them yet, though. That is a lie. No, we haven't. But if you've seen Averitt's they're design, gonna be there. Um, you could probably make mm. your own assumptions. <laughs> But yes, yes. Yeah. that is uh, Need help. the action thing. Check back in when I draw the action. <laughs> <laughs> I, I for one, am very much looking forward to it because uh, thanks to like some of the fan fictions I've been working on, I've been practicing writing and I guess scripting action scenes. Um, because sometimes that can be hard to do, you know? Like there's only so many times you can... Uh, right, like, he grunted with effort as he lifted whatever, or yes. he dodged the thing. So it, it's kind of interesting to see the different angles you can approach it from. And I think hearing about from an artist, I almost said an arting perspective, that's not a thing. So, from an artist perspective is, uh, you know, insightful. I think the last thing I'll say about the sort of, um, it's called dynamic posing. Right, and there's a difference between dynamic poses and, you know, stationary poses. And now stationary poses are something that you can stand there and balance and do. You're not in the middle of a movement, versus a dynamic pose is being in the middle of a movement, and they're two very different things. The biggest thing is that a dynamic pose is considered off balance. And I say that in quotation oh. marks because obviously nobody's necessarily falling. You can be falling, but you're not necessarily falling. Um, but <laughs> the thing is, is that when you are in a dynamic pose, you are moving. So part of your body, I guess, technically hasn't caught up to balance you, if that makes sense. If you take a picture of somebody oh, when they're running, right? Because what um, a big thing that they tell you to do in art when drawing a pose, and, and this is again drawing stationary poses, this is usually for figure drawing when you are drawing a person who has to hold a physical pose for a significant amount of time, they have to be balanced. And what that means is that if you were to draw a straight line between the character and the floor, a, per a, a line perpendicular to the floor, they would be roughly even amounts of them on, on either side of the line, right? So if their like, shoulders are over here, their hips are gonna be over here, and then their legs are gonna be, you know, so they're like roughly the same amount of mass is physically on either side of this center line, okay? That is a ah. stable pose. That means that person is, is stationary. Because if you think about it, when someone is sort of like balancing on one foot, right? Mm -hmm. Your hips are never like flat like this, right? Your, your hips are never straight. No. Your, your shoulders are never straight. If you were trying to balance on one foot or whatever, you, this, this would fall over. Because your weight is, your center line is here. <laughs> and there's so much more body on this side of the center line than there is on this side of the center line. On the contrary, if you were to draw a leg here and you had sort of like it tilted this way, you know, sort of came in and the body sort of came like this and they sort of like, you know, came over, right? If the center line is now here, there's more on either side of the weight, 
that makes any sense. So, um, it does. dynamic poses break that quote unquote rule because they are off balance because they are in the middle of doing an action. So if you are running forward, you know, usually you're leaning forward and your sort of like front leg is hitting the ground. Um, but you're still like leaning forward because your back leg is about to come up and catch you, you know, essentially running is falling forward. And so, um, that's sort of how, how it works out there, right? If you are actually falling, your legs are going to be behind you and your body's going to be forward and it's going to sort of be weird and, and awkward and off balance. Um, so I think using those are very important to action scenes. Um, you can see I, I draw a lot of characters sort of vaulting uh, things, mainly the rowboat, because both Milano <laughs> and Ferrix are show-offs and, and wild childs. And um, so they do a lot of the, literally, I look up parkour vaults, right? Uh, a lot of Ferrix is literally me going on the internet and looking up parkour dude jumping a wall. And there's like eight <laughs> different ways to do it. And I'm like, okay, I really specifically want the one-handed legs off to the side one that I've done twice now because I do enjoy them. Um, but another one that Ferrix will likely do in the future is two-handed legs through the middle, scrunched up, and legs through the middle, and then coming down. Um, so there's a lot of way to do that. I suggest watching a lot of parkour if you want a Ferrix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I enjoy watching parkour, so uh, that definitely inspired Ferrix a lot uh, and his movements and, and everything like that, because I feel like that's probably the best um, analog to him being an, uh, an arboreal, you know, collar. Um, if you watch Fossa move through trees, they are incredibly agile. You wonder how they oh, don't yeah. fall out of the tree without any thumbs because, oh my god, they're nuts. They just jump from tree to tree. And so, uh, sort of how I they, thought... They know what they're doing. That that would be translated would be um, essentially parkour. Tree parkour. Uh, <laughs> and they use a lot of bars. Now, I would probably end up, if needed, using a little bit of gymnastics uh, for, like, you know, certain... Um, like uneven bar sort of swings and things like that. But um, the big one is parkour because it's less rigid in your form. And Ferrix is not like trained in any way. He just does what he needs to, to do what he can, right? What feels right. Um, so there's no like points <laughs> in his whole thing. <laughs> um, similarly, I plan to uh, sort of use like triathlon athlete style uh swimming for uh like mainly Sinnet, who's the big swimmer because unlike certain olympic swimming with like certain strokes and things like that the form doesn't matter uh it's just sort of get there as fast as you can and get back um the free stroke would probably work for that as well um in olympians as well but so taking those sort of like human sports and sort of mushing them Adapting into them. how a, you know, an aquatic creature, an, uh, an arboreal creature, you know, an aerial creature would do it. Um, you know, if, if Aster ever has to dive, I would look at divers, you know, probably skydivers uh, more than pool divers, but he's also a, 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 a bird of the ocean, so maybe a little bit of both. Um, I think that's, that's your biggest bet references. I tell this to everybody. If you're not using references, you're doing yourself a disservice, okay? I'm not uh. saying you have to trace them. I'm not saying you have to do whatever. Uh, you know, if you do trace something one for one, just don't post it on the internet. It's fine for you to do in your own home, but don't don't post it on the internet. Uh, people will come at you. But um, doing sort of research like that and taking those poses and sort of getting an idea of how the body works and everything like that is much better than trying to just be like oh this is how i imagine just, parkour just kind of winging uh, it <laughs> because while you have a decent picture in your brain uh, you're likely not someone who does parkour you know just statistically and uh, don't know it well enough to really understand what's going on and so looking at people doing it is much better yeah it actually, uh, it kind of falls into something similar with writing, where 
you'll often hear people say, you know, write what you know, because that's something you have experience in. You'll know how to accurately portray it. So what do you do for the stuff you don't have experience in? Well, you research the ever loving crap out of it. Yeah, so much, so much. <laughs> so research. you know what you're talking about. And I'm so curious what the writer of Food Wars did. Research or did they know it? Were they a chef? Did they go to culinary school originally? Who knows? Whatever the case may be, they definitely had to have a respect for chefs. Yeah. And honestly, they, and they probably had to the do their research either way. Because there's no way that just one person knew all of that just off the top. You know? I would be very surprised if that were the case. I would case. be incredibly impressed. <laughs> That would be like, holy crap, this guy is on a whole nother level. Because we're not just talking, oh, food A plus food B equals tasty. We're talking about <laughs> molecul molecular levels of knowledge here. <laughs> yeah. Freaking <laughs> like, Hokkaido it, it, it's specific more than just potato strawberries knowledge. taste good with whipped cream like it is so much deeper than that i love it though honestly top tier show if you have not seen food wars it is a, oh. it is a little on the longer side but it's a fun shonen cooking show and honestly well, very that's, inspiring that's the thing and, and sorry to uh insert this in here but you know when you have that kind of insider knowledge when you're when you're able to kind of look at the story and think wow, the author had to put so much time and effort in to know all about this topic. Like, you you do have a level of respect for the story that's placed in front of you. I, I think more so than if that wasn't there. That could just be a me feeling, but uh, I, I, I think, think Ori agrees. It's interesting. I definitely think that after starting work on the comic, I am much more analyzing about media than I ever mm -hmm. used to be. Um, I will say I don't analyze art as much as I probably should. Most of my art consumption is, wow, this is really pretty and uh, envy and push it down. You're good. You're fine. Look at your Vash art. It's beautiful. Your Vash art is good too. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I've been on Tumblr way too much and Tumblr is just rife with tri stamp art. And Mars, I don't know if you saw all the shit I said last night, but didn't. I'm like too crazy. Yeah, look at Tumblr uh, every once in a while nowadays. I'm, I'm uh. getting too into it. Um, but essentially, I found some really, really pretty, you know, art from artists about Vash, and I was just like, oh, please these, send this. Oh, they sent. Go freaking look at Tumblr, Oh, you man. did? Yeah. I was saying, look at Tumblr to watch my descent into madness last night. Oh, um, oh, oh. Yeah, no, I'm saying, I, I am sending I you on tum you stuff on Tumblr. I thought you said you sent me artwork. I'm like, I don't recall. Yes, I send you stuff on Tumblr just like I send you stuff on Instagram now. So check it every once in a while. <laughs> Maybe once a day, because okay. it's usually at night time. I show. <laughs> when I, I'm getting back into Tumblr. Uh, but uh, I, I will admit, I was feeling very dead this morning, so Discord kind of slipped through my notice. No worries, no worries. But uh, yeah, and it's just like, oh, look at all this really pretty bash art. Ugh. Your art. <laughs> Ori, you're good. Your art is good. No, but it's like envy. And it's like, no, no, you're fine. You're good. It's really pretty. No, too. Your, your art is gorgeous. <laughs> pain <laughs> remember it, it's oh. worthy of being my wallpaper <laughs> oh look at that multiple times i'm pretty i will say i'm pretty proud of that There's... oh multiple times absolutely it's... i think the only thing that didn't become a wallpaper was randy cunningham and that's only because i was into another fandom at the time and wanted that's... to rep that <laughs> <laughs> No worries. Thank you, PCM. It's one of those. I wouldn't say I ever get imposter syndrome. I I I, I call it envy, right? And I think Mars has expressed something like this uh, in the past with like other fan fiction writers and things like that. But the idea is oh, like definitely. looking, and it's like, how dare this be so good as well? You know, not even how dare, but just like this is really good too, and this is not what I draw, but that's because of you know other different style choices and all this other stuff as well besides just like it, they might have more experience than I do but it's just like it oh. is so funny that you bring up imposter syndrome because I mean you are spot on with writing I don't experience imposter syndrome like I, I am in a grad program trust me I know what imposter syndrome feels like and this is not that <laughs> 
it's yeah envy really is the best way to describe it because it's like i'm not upset that it exists or i'm not upset that i'm not the one who made it exist like everyone has their own ways of telling a story or illustrating something like maybe someone will want to focus on a part of this story more or some will want to focus on a part of this artwork more that another person might be like well i want to focus on this element more but that's what makes it so great is that everyone has their different interpretations of the same character or the same story that's what makes these fandoms so rich is that we're all able to contribute these ideas my my envy comes in in, in in the weird sense of that. So I, as a person, enjoy a large variety of things. I like to mm. sew. I would really like to do more crochet than I am physically able to have time for to do. I'd like to sew more other specific things, you know. I, of course, like art. I like to sketch in my sketchbook, you know. I like to do... I haven't done origami in years. You know, it's like, I like <laughs> a lot of things, okay? I'm a very crafty person. I enjoy doing a lot of things. But there's only so much time in a day, so there's definitely this part of me that sort of sees something, anything, in a field that I enjoy and have dabbled in to a certain extent. And I don't have the problem of, wow, it's so good, like, my I'm not good. I have the problem of, how dare they have time for this? <laughs> I want time for this. How, How you dare you this? not eat, sleep, and breathe? But, but I literally have to sit there and, and remind myself, it's like, because you did, you edited Ace Attorney videos for two hours every day this week, and you did, you know, th this other thing, and you so, you know, it's like, okay, I did other things, but I also want to have done that thing. <laughs> I saw an artist that is a really beautiful artist, and uh, I don't remember their name off the top of my head because I'm quote unquote new to being back on Tumblr. But they mm -hmm. turned out that they drew Vash fan art every single week. Oh my essentially, god. Essentially during Ow. its run. Right. And I'm talking like fully rezzed, like, like, like full on, uh, you know, Vash fan art. Like it wasn't sketches and doodles and stuff. It was like full on, like colored, like shaded everything. Um, background okay, sometimes. Okay, so this I desperately need I to see. I definitely sent you some a lot of things. Uh, so it, it, you look on Tumblr, it's one of the artists that I sent, not last night, the time before that. Um, okay, I'm literally going do, to do, Discord right now. Uh, it's not Discord, Tumblr. But, um, oh, okay. They do do NSFW art earlier than that. <laughs> so they sort of bash the recent thing. So I didn't follow them because like, I don't really need the other stuff, but like I will enjoy your bash art. Um, but the point is, is that I went, damn, how dare I have not drawn Vash art like this good every week. You know, like, 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 like I'm a, I'm a bad artist because I didn't rep the, my, you know, fandoms as much as this person doing the Lord's work. Right. And then I have to sit there and remind myself, it's like, yes, but you are working on a comic and they're not. And you're, you know, editing Ace Attorney videos and they're probably not. And they probably just have a regular job and do something <laughs> this is their free time <laughs> it's like ah so that's that's sort of my envy I'll have to i feel that did you find my tumblr descent into madness oh not not yet okay. i'm uh i actually have to respond to my project crew <laughs> how could you no how dare i but yeah and then i have to look back at like my vash art that i did and be like okay but it was it was good you were good <laughs> You're fine. It's not that one. I think it's this one. Yeah, I found I found which one it is. It's it's one of the first ones I sent you last night. I think. Yeah, it is. It did so much bash. <laughs> I'm like, how dare you do this to me? Because that's the other thing. I'm very much I don't consider myself a fan artist in the sense of that. I don't mainly draw fan art. I mainly draw the boys. But there's sort of like a weird sort of part of me that's very much like, how dare you mm -hmm. like not draw all the things for fan art? Like how dare you not draw more fan art with it when there's other artists out here like doing like full page you? sketches of like characters and like, you know, like I said, weekly freaking fan art of this character. And it's just like, you know what it is? It's, I don't get that obsessed with other media, 
right. Like, I very much enjoy it. You know, I, I love watching a show. Um, oh, but, oh, wow. You sent me a lot. Yeah. And then also the notes, you know, sort of display my madness. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> I got to be honest. I'm never on Tumblr. I think I missed everything you've ever sent me. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm seeing, like, Kave, I'm seeing Gojo, I'm... Uh, Gojo was a while ago, I but the Kave, a lot. uh, I'll hate them. I did some of that last night, too. But, um, yeah, so, you know, be on Tumblr, like, at least once a week, maybe, you know? Maybe check it once a day. Yeah, but just, no, maybe, uh, maybe I'll pop over just, now you know, and you then. You don't have to exist on Tumblr, but, uh, yeah, just, just looking at it. But, um, yeah, so, so some artists, like... I follow an artist that still draws Keith and Lance from Voltron this many years later, right? And it's just like, I, oh. how am I not this obsessed with something, right? Like, I envy the amount of passion, and then I have to sit there and think about how I draw my characters every single freaking day, outside of the oh. comic, all the time. Fuck. Yeah, I know. So good. I I, 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 I had a time. I bet you know the one I'm reacting to. Uh, maybe not. There's a bunch of them. Is it the one with the back turned? No, uh, it, it's the one with the desperate look and the tears in the eye. Oh, yeah, that one. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, that hurts me. I think that was the one where I was like, I need to leave. <laughs> or like, the back turn, also very good. Yeah, I am, no, no, I am no, saving I these to a uh, personal folder. Thank you very much. <laughs> Why can't I find messages? Oh. <laughs> okay, I understand, but he's still a baby, even in his final form. <laughs> I know, I just, I came across it when I was dying. Yeah, uh, PCM, do you watch anime at all? Because you might like this one, if I'm being honest. Yeah, <laughs> it's honestly, kind of, it's yeah. like have you torture seen, the main character. Have you seen Trigun Stampede? And if you haven't, you should. It's only 12 episodes. Season 2 is confirmed, so it will have a second season. But honestly, it feels right up your alley, PCM. It's a very lovable, sort of goofy character that has a lot of freaking trauma and has been tortured real bad by the end. Yeah. He's uh, also got a bit of a savior complex. Uh-huh, yeah, so you say, PCM. Mm-hmm. PCM, why do I not believe you? It, I I'm sorry, PCM. I have ample evidence to not believe you. Because now I'm also curious, though, PCM. What anime have you watched? What are some of your favorite animes? Oh, but really quickly going back to, like... Okay, Vash smiles a lot. I think you'd like it, PCM. I think you really would. Oh, that that smiles stampede. a lot. I think he's you would actually goofy. really enjoy it. He's a fun guy. At least from the vibe you've given on stream, I think you'd actually really like Trigon Stampede for a lot of reasons. It feels, yeah. it gives me a PCM with like this vibe. So, but if you give me like some of your favorite animes, I know you at least Mars it. can tell you something. Assassination Classroom. Ooh. I've been meaning to watch that I one. That's one I have not seen. That's one I have not done. I, I have it on my list. It's in there. I just, I have not gotten around to it. Uh, I'm so happy because Dylan wants to watch the Ace Attorney anime. Uh, so once nice. we finish, um, once we finish uh, Justice for All, we're going to watch the first season together. Very excited. Uh, that's going to be beautiful. I finally got the My Anime List app so I could have like a list. Yes! And so it's I do Ooh, very little. I, I want to friend you on there. Okay, you'll have to tell me how to do that when we see each other <laughs> or after oh, stream. Okay. Uh, but um, it's literally just have a list. I don't rate anything. My brain just can't. I I can't, I can't try that hard. <laughs> I just I just have it on there. Uh, yeah. Uh, oof. There's a lot. I, think I reacted Shit, to the new some Dr. of them. Stone is out. Damn. Fuck! I think I reacted to some I'm of trouble. them, PCM. It was a it was a ride. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> it was That's a right. ride. God, my heart was in my throat the entire time. I couldn't. Oh my goodness. Poor character. Everything suddenly just gave me notifications. Oh boy. But, oh boy. Yeah, it it's going, PCM. It's going. Campaign, you know. 
<laughs> How's it going? You know? She smiled last session. That's that's good. Why did she smile though? Mm. That See, is we, true. We need yeah. You know, uh, may maybe one day. Unfortunately, it, it did just sort of end up how our schedules worked out this way. Yeah. Um, but they are subject to change. With uh, summer coming up, I'm going to be taking some new courses and well, have uh, some more stuff is to that... do. So we'll have to figure that out. Yes, of course. PCM, of course. We like pick oh my gosh, please. But, uh... See, okay. I have art hubris. And art hubris is thinking in my heart of hearts that I totally should and could make a pea crew and then being like never doing it because I know deep down inside that that's way too much fucking effort. My art hubris is going through and trying to remember all of the anime that I've watched, going into it thinking, wow, I should just make one fan art for all the anime I've watched, you know, like that I've watched and finished, right? Like that, like that, that would be fun. That would be nice. And then realizing how many animes I've watched being like, hmm. Yeah, maybe just the ones that I, like, still really remember. <laughs> like, hmm, oh, oh, oh crap. <gasps> it's magic now. Ooh. Nice. She's got some stuff to Ooh. play with. Oh, that's interesting, PC. I bet she's very happy about that. Oh, wow. Aww. Aww. She deserves it. She deserves happiness. She does. But wow, PCM, with all the Nephi art, it seems like you're going to get it once. Maybe it means there'll be good, good references nine nine. For, for, for my Nephi art. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to seeing more Nephi art. And at this point, it's a necessity. It is a necessity. This is not the mouth I want Ferx to have. Oh no! That's what the eraser's for. And no, not the undo, because I did things in between. Posted her face, her live, posted her live face reaction in open secret. I understand now. I read those mm. words three times before my brain caught up. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Does she have red hair? I didn't know she had red hair. My brain never thought she had red hair. I don't know. I always pictured her blonde for whatever reason. She has red hair. Damn. Okay. So it takes the away more her, you know. her her ear wings too. I like her ear wings though. They're cute. Yeah, she's a redhead. Damn. All right, I got that wrong. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. But look hey, at that. The, the more you know. The more references, the better. In you know, you know, that's and, why and this references. is a good case study exactly. of why more references are good. Disguise self. Ah, I see, I see. Oh my god, jeez. Oh. You've had a day, haven't you? I, I definitely had, had a long day. I saw Dylan today, so it was definitely like running around and doing stuff. Not really running around and doing stuff, but like <laughs> I had to interact, I guess, <laughs> instead of sit in a chair all day. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing, but definitely like a tiring thing. And also, uh, I found out that <laughs> just like introvert and extrovert, in my world there's an artovert and an editovert. <laughs> what I mean by that is that while editing these right. attorney videos is a creative process because I do have to do creative things with it, um, it is incredibly draining and I find it horribly draining and that's why I specifically make sure that I only have to do it two hours a day and I do it like first thing in the day so I can be done. Uh, but I had to edit for almost five hours yesterday uh, in order to make sure that all of my stuff was ready to be posted uh, while I am gone and I just was so done that I literally went outside mm -hmm. and then I sketched the Hotsons you saw for like an hour and then I came back inside and then I sketched more Hotsons <laughs> for like another 30 minutes and then I actually enjoyed doing backgrounds of outcast stuff and uh yeah oh man it was a time it was certainly a time it sounds like a time <gasps> that nephew's attractive oh that's nice 
good for her. She's go she's moving up in the world. She's canonically attractive. She has her 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 uh, her disguised self face, so she doesn't have to be concerned all the time. Look at her moving up in the world. I am okay. Yeah, you you may certainly ask enthuse. I am taking a river cruise through the Netherlands and Belgium. 10 days. Technically only 8 days because 2 of those days are travel days, but 10 days total I will be uh, technically only 9 days I will be gone because Sunday is the 10th day I come back. Yeah, so it is a um, <laughs> it is an incredibly uh, belated college graduation uh, present because I graduated December of 2019 and my grandmother wonderful woman gave me a gift of going to Budapest, Vienna, and Prague with her in the summer of 2020. So that didn't happen. <laughs> so that didn't happen. And then, uh, so we canceled that. So I got to choose what I wanted to do. And I wanted to do this, this cruise. It's specifically the whole point is to see the tulip farms and everything and the windmills and everything uh, in Amsterdam is like a big part of it. Um, and I love plants, of course, so this was, like, very, like, cool to me. I really wanted to do it. So we signed up again, and, and so it has to be at, like, um, like, end of March, all of April sort of thing. Like, those are the options that you get. Um, and, uh, at that time, the time before we, so you have to put, like, the full deposit down in, like, January, and in, like, December... Uh, Omicron started being a, a big deal, and I had a job at that point that is a very annoying job that I'm very happy to not have anymore, uh, that mm -hmm. made it incredibly terrifying to one, go away on vacation in the first place, and two, get stuck over there. That was my fear. Not the fear that we were going to get cancelled, the fear that I was going to get stuck in Europe. <laughs> that was my, my fear. So we decided to postpone again, and so finally, now that everything has sort of calmed down, we finally signed up for this one. Uh, this one still didn't have its hiccups. Uh, this one, I was actually supposed to be gone the 6th through the 15th, was the original dates of this trip. However, uh, in like December, I got notification that our uh, cruise ship was being lent to the Ukraine war efforts. Uh, and we could no longer have the trip. Those dates were canceled. So here you could be on these other dates if you want. And I was like, yes, just do it. anything at this point. Please, I just want to go. <laughs> Let me go. And so I like told my dad, I'm like, dad, did you put it for vacation yet? Because now my, so now my father's actually going on the trip instead of my grandmother because she feels like her health is not uh, good enough to go on like a whole uh, walking and everything. But yeah, exactly. And was definitely very scenic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very happy that we are like here that it is happening but I won't deny that I definitely had like pre-vacation stress of like I need to edit these videos and get them set up to go and I need to tell Mars all the shit that I need to do and I need to tell Mars and Dylan that they have to control the discord because we're getting a lot of people now it seems like we're getting a yes. few people in there being kind of active especially because like summer vacation slowly coming up and rearing up so uh you and Dylan you know don't don't be afraid to strike people delete messages ban people what you know whatever uh if they break the rules <laughs> or they're sussy I don't know someone in chat today put a video that was like country music very quiet best you know turn volume up and uh there won't be Mars streams. No, Mars has finals nah. as well. Uh, so I, I have finals out. next week. I have um, projects. It's just, it's a lot, but I'm happy this aligned well sort of with all worked out in what the end. Ori's doing. So yeah, it, it all worked, worked out. out in the end. Dylan also has finals. So it, it, it all worked out. And you only miss technically one week of stream. You only miss one Sunday, one Tuesday, one Thursday, guys. So, you know, pretty good. Uh, little little just about what happened in March um, and then uh, I was gonna say something oh yeah but it was like country music very quiet turn your volume way up best used with headphones and I like was wary of it and so I like put 
I like played it kind of softly and it was just screeching noises and so I deleted that message. <laughs> I was just like, that's it, I'm not, we're not dealing with this. I didn't just spam like, them or anything. Yeah, no. Because their first message was fine. But that message, I was like, no. So we're just gonna strict that. Don't do it. Yeah, this was today. Uh, it's the same person that posted the fish, the fish in the cup. Ah, the, the one who asked, would you drink this? Yeah, to that save same the world? person then posted this video that I have just mentioned, and I was like, yeah, no, we ain't doing that. Seeing a lot of Grove? Yeah, it's good. It's nice. It's fun. I mean, we're over two... I think we're 212 on Twitch. We're at like 270-something. Just about, something yeah. Two, I think. So, it's, it's happening. <laughs> We're certainly going. That yeah, is... 273 on YouTube, so we're slowly approaching that 300. It's definitely happening. Noop is just good luck. Woo! Don't drop my pen. Noop is just good luck, PCM. Obvi. It also has to do with enthused uh, uh, promoting us, obviously. Everybody. Everybody's hard at work over here. You hit affiliate? Oh, very nice, PCM. Very nice. Oh, congratulations! It's so funny. It's it's very funny. Um, so an affiliate. We were affiliate. We can be affiliate here as a thing. <laughs> um, it means so much in Zeus. I swear. Um, but uh, we were affiliate, and the reason that we're not affiliate is solely because I wanted to stream on YouTube as well, and now. And so technically in the affiliate contract, it's like you cannot simul stream anywhere else. You can stream there like instead, but you can't simul stream. And that was kind of the whole point. I was not going to just stream on YouTube and not on Twitch. Um, so I did, did the thing and I was just like, yeah, I'm not affiliate on Twitch anywhere. Moving on. But technically, uh, I know someone who streams on both Twitch and YouTube and still is affiliate. And I'm just kind of like, I hope you don't get caught. I really... <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything, <laughs> but I don't. I don't think he knows. But it's just like, oh. But it went for the the shorts. Uh, I have to do more shorts. I just. <sighs> okay, can I talk about shorts for a second? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so what happened originally? Incredibly originally, the YouTube shorts were super simple. It was I would mark in stream where funny things happened, and then I would go there after stream and make clips and then there was this site called join combo that allowed me to put the clips it would just import the clips from twitch into their software and that's how i did the little circles with our heads and everything that flash in and out as we talk and whatever i did all that through join combo and then the words i would manually do on tiktok and then i would save that video and put it on youtube that was the very very early shorts then I figured out how to use DaVinci Resolve, which is what I edit all our videos on because it's free. And uh, so what I would do is I learned that I could actually, I could edit it in Joint Combo originally. I could download it. I could put it in DaVinci and put the subtitles in in the fancy way that all the videos are in and put the subtitles in that way. And that was really nice. And then I could put it... Uh, put it onto YouTube, put it onto TikTok, anything like that. And then I decided that it was just easier to edit most of it in DaVinci and then just put it in uh, Join Combo for the last couple uh, moments with the circles and everything, because that was very easy to do in Join Combo. However, um, at a certain point, Join Combo stopped like accepting me uploading videos to it uh, like like it would let me do it but then when i would render it with the join combo it would just be black with sound really there would be no video anymore and i was so confused and i kept putting all this time in and just have no video to do anything with and it kind of like really 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 sucked so and then on top of that they made it so that unless you're like a paid person you have to, you can only make like 15 videos a month, which just is kind of dumb and stupid. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it was very much like, mm. 
I'm kind of done with this. And it is a lot of effort, sadly, to do the shorts. Because that's a whole other set of editing uh, on top of the video editing. And I really oh, like yeah. That. So it's just like a whole other step of editing. And then a few times I like forgot to mark like the streams and everything. And so at one point I was like, okay, I, I know how to do it in... Um, exactly, Enthuse, exactly. So I know how to do the same thing in DaVinci Resolve. Unfortunately, it's not as fast. Essentially, with Join Combo, it was like one click and it would make the video in that three circles, the small video and the blurred background video format and with all the different layers. And then I could just edit it, you know, to cut out the circles when needed. But in DaVinci, I obviously have to make all those layers myself, uh, at least to my cur current understanding. That's the only way to do it. And while I've sort of streamlined it to a certain extent, it's definitely not one click template and go. <laughs> So it's just a lot more effort in the first place. And it really sucks because shorts are the way to grow, you know, uh, a, a whole thing. Well, but it is just People like, watch them the most. Yeah, exactly. But it is just one of those, I just don't have the time. It is, it's also one of those things I would be, <laughs> my goal in life, this is really funny. This is what I would still consider my hobby. It's none of it's making me money or anything like this. I'm doing this for fun. Uh, thankfully, I'm in a position where I don't need to have like a full-time job right now or anything. But my goal is that when I do actually go back to having a job, which is at the end of this year, uh, maybe sooner, we'll see what happens, that I get to use that money for a social media manager. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. That you know, nice. I, I do like stuff like I've seen the, the, the I like the, the Minecraft parkour of that like one or two Minecraft parkour courses though. That one's good too. That one's good too. Um, and I've seen a couple temple runs, which is interesting. Kind of a throwback, but you know, I don't know. But yeah, so I'm very sad that I don't do the shorts because Dylan loved the shorts and he thought they were hilarious. And obviously, you know, like enthused, they bring people in, but it was just. They were hysterical. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I've definitely sort of moved back into really treating this whole thing as a hobby when I was treating it like a job because I had the time to, you know, not like I was making money, but I could put the same amount of time into it for a long time. And now I'm just kind of like, I would like to <laughs> do other things, like all the art I show Mars at night. <laughs> That's all the time I get now. But that's oh, it is truly such tragic. Is life. Lost their attention to the fae. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are we throwing at a wall? I missed it. I don't know. Oh, throwing a plushie at the wall. Yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. And you say you don't like to torture main characters. <laughs> I odds, don't know. The, the, the statistics seem to be against you. The facts uh, seem to seem to go against you. Yes, a new plush. You're very fun. Okay, a new plush would be I very, very. I'm, cute. Okay, this is very funny. I like plushies. There's no question about that. My room has a lot of plushies. However, I'm not a person that is here that I'm personally into, like, person plushies, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, the Vash one is really cute, but, like, I don't, I kind of don't want it. You know, like, like, I don't, like, you know, I see a lot of people making, like, their avatars as, like, plushies or whatever. And, like, they're really cute, but it's like, I don't really want that kind of plushie. The plushies that I have, uh, the pro probably the weirdest one is I have a carton of milk plushie. Uh, because I'm obsessed with milk. But uh, the only characters that I have specific characters of are Stitch and Snorlax. <laughs> and Snoopy. Well, those, I I kind of, Snoopy. those I kind of understand because those are, well, animals. Like creatures, right? Or, or animals. They're, they're in the ballpark you know? of And being. then every other plushie I have is like an animal. Like I have a little, I have the 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 banana gator i have the a crocodile i have multiple cows i have a triceratops i have 
a little handmade chick plushie and it's adorable. I made myself a bunny plushie during COVID. That's what I did during COVID. I made a stuffed animal uh, and her name <laughs> is Connie. Um, I have like a squishmallow owl. Of another cat, you know, like a lot of monkeys. I was into monkeys for a very long time, so I have a few monkeys. But they're all like animals, so it's just like it's very interesting to me because obviously they get like a lot of, you know, traction. The like character plushes, but it's like to me, it's like I'd rather like acrylic stands or like pins. Oh yeah. You don't well, think Audie's joking anymore? Oh. Ooh, official Pokemon. What what Pokemon in those? A what? <laughs> no, Noof, Noof is not a creature. Yeah, exactly. I agree, in those. I agree. I want. I want. My goal. Okay. My goal. If my goal is that when we hit, and I'm saying when because I'm optimistic, when we hit a hundred subscribers on the Outcast. English webtoon because the the Spanish one has way surpassed that, but I, I was not ready for that, so I need Which a little is more time. Wild. Um, I want to make the acrylic standees. That's that's my goal. I think that would be awesome. I already have it like pretty. And I would out, buy one, and I have an idea of how I want to do it. Um, you know, the sitting cruties. Okay, I have to. Lilligant and Volcarona. I have to look these up now. You know the sitting cuties. There they are. Oh, I've seen them. I, actually, it was funny. I was watching uh, Jaden Animations earlier today. Uh huh. And she did a whole hour and a half long uh, video oh reviewing every single this feels you know, the plushie. It was amazing. Nice. Jaden has all of them. <laughs> you know, she deserves them. She deserves them. They're four inches. She got all of them for free, too. <laughs> I technically have a couple other Pokemon. So I have a Snorlax, which I love. And honestly, goal in life is to have like a life-size Snorlax because I need it. I mean, I'm not going to explain. I just need it. Um, I also have a Plusel because my best friend in high school got me the Plusel and they got the Minun, and so I still have that. I also you, have a- You call it Plusel and not, a uh, Plusel? Plusel? Whatever, I don't know. It, it's one of those things you read, I never watched the anime, so it's one of those I'm things just you only checking. read. <laughs> I'm just checking. Plusel and, and my, Minun? Minun? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the plus and minus Pokemon. One I have the of them. One. And minus, minus, I don't, god, I, yeah, but who cares. I have the plus one, and they have the minus one. And then I also have Gengar. And I think that's all my Pokemon. No, I also have, um, Glaceon. A sitting, like a sitting Glaceon. Maybe she, they're a sitting cutie? I don't think so. I think they're not four inches. Maybe they are. I don't know. I have a Glaceon. Wait, hold on. No, mine is my plusel. Plusel is not a sitting cutie. Mine has like the suction cup on it, <laughs> so you can like hang it on a window or something. I don't know. No, PCM, don't. <laughs> what gen is? What gen are those two Pokemon? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Plusel and mine on Gen three. Okay, so let me be they were, a young they were the child Pikachu. that never learned. Okay? They were the Pikachu ripoffs for that generation. I, I know Glaceon is Gen Gen Four. Glaceon is some peak character design. I love Glaceon. Gotta say, I mean, I, I'm an evolution fan. I'm always sad that they never give every uh, type an evolution. It just makes me upset because, like, I want it. Like, why can't you just do it for me, please? You know, <laughs> just for me. Leafeon's better. My goal, uh, for, fourth gen was my first ever Pokemon game. Um, so my goal, I got all of them. I was like, I have to have them all. And then, yeah, so I, I like all of them. Oh my goodness. There's too many layers here. Oh. You want more Eevees? I need more Eevees. I would sad. love more evolutions. We have not gotten 
a good uh, evolution since Gen 6, was it? We haven't gotten any evolution since Gen 6. Was it 6 or was it 5? No, it was 6. Okay. We had Sylveon in Gen 6. Yeah, but didn't we have everything in Gen 4? Yeah, exactly. Gen 5 didn't give one. They yeah, so the it. last one was in Gen 6. Yeah. And then what, we're in Gen 9? Is that what Scarlet and Violet is? Oh god, I think so. That's gonna- that- that gives me pain, if I'm being honest. God, I'm old! Yeah. That gives me a lot of pain. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that the next Pokemon game will have double-digit numbers of the generation. That is, the, just that is hope, the worst part to me. I just hope that the next Pokemon game doesn't have any glitches. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> have they fixed those? Are they fixed? From what I've heard, they have not released a patch for it. Damn. Um, I really hope that they do because... I, I'm very upset. I watch... Okay, this is going to be a bit of a tangent. I'm very upset at yeah. Generation 9. Because what about three and three? I was watching a uh, top ten AI bosses the other day, and apparently there's something like really interesting. I'm I'm trying to say this without giving spoilers. Um, there's something really interesting going on with the Pokemon professors in Gen Nine. Uh, apparently, the writing is really damn good. They go for, like, a twist, but it's a twist that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like, wow, I want to experience this great story, but I'm also really mad that Game Freak published this with so many damn glitches, and that's not something I want to support. But I'm also depriving myself of this really good story that honestly the last time i heard a pokemon having a really good story was like back gen in five. the platinum <laughs> gen 5 days you know yeah gen 5 but I, I'm yeah gonna, i'm gonna tell you all a little a little secret mars already knows this secret i own scarlet there is yes, you do a very high chance that i will not play scarlet until Mars tells me, because this is how I get my information, that the next Pokemon gen is coming out. And then the next vacation I go on after that will be, oh shit, I have to finish. I have to play Scarlet before the new gen comes out. And then uh, that's what happens. <laughs> that reminds me, are you finally going to finish Spiritfarer? It's been a year, uh, dude. Again, I only play video games on vacation. And while this is a vacation, I don't consider it to be the same. I don't expect to have that much downtime if I'm being <laughs> completely honest. So okay, that's uh, fair. I don't plan on bringing my Switch. I just plan on bringing my sketchbook. Um, because essentially it's like, yes, the ship leaves at eight so you or, or seven in the evening. So you have to be back by then, <laughs> right? And then it's essentially like, wake up at seven in the morning. So uh, I don't expect to have it a lot of like, chilling around versus when I visit like my grandmother the whole point is leisure so there's lots of time in the day for me to sit around and just play a video game mm -hmm. so that's how the thing I think it depends it, it was some did some didn't enthuse some people had problems some people didn't uh but they were like game breaking it, problems it was very up in the air like the latest I've heard is like five five blah 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 save files are getting corrupted now which oh. is just like mm, yeah no thank you yeah uh, i didn't buy i don't like that i haven't bought a pokemon game since i literally think since generation four um i might have bought my own copy of black but i think that was it <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, because they like to come out in November, I ask for them from one family member every year for Christmas, and they always deliver, and so that's all I have to do. See, I remember the last Pokemon game I bought was, uh, uh, the, the region based on Hawaii. I'm blanking on it right now. Alola? But, um, 
Alola, thank you. That was Gen 7, I think. Okay. Sun and Moon, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that was it. Um that came out when I was in undergrad and it was freshman year, so was it freshman year? It was either freshman or sophomore. It was definitely one of the early years before I had like a core group of friends. So like I was feeling kind of lonely. I wanted the comfort of Pokemon and I was really excited for this new generation to come out. There was a GameStop literally right in town. Like you could walk to it. I went the day it dropped and there was literally a line going down the street. <laughs> All the way to GameStop is like, it's not just the college kids, because there's also an elementary school and a middle school in the same area. So, everyone was there. <laughs> and, and it was really cool, because you had like all the middle school kids, all the high school kids, and then you had the college kids. <laughs> that we're here to get this game and we're all just talking in line like yeah what starter are you gonna get oh what version are you gonna get what what have you played what got you into pokemon it was like a whole bonding activity it was awesome i will never forget that i i have played every gen but gen 9 <laughs> i have played every gen but gen 9 not necessarily Come that, it's original. that day um i did play the original red on my Game Boy, because I got it for like five bucks at like a yard sale or something, and that was wild. <laughs> um, but I never played the original Gen 2, I played Soul Silver, and then uh, Gen 3, I did play the original Ruby, and then I have Alpha Sapphire, and then I did Diamond, and while I own both Pearl and Platinum second hand, I've never played them, I just own them because I'm Chad like that, apparently. And then, yeah, played Black, played White 2. White 2, I know, was a Christmas present because I got it with... So I don't have the original... Well, I'll, I'll backtrack. I don't own... I didn't get the original Game Boy because, like, it was new. I have the original Game Boy because it's my mother's. My first gaming system... Uh, was the Game Boy Advanced SP. So the one that folds. The one right before the DS. Uh, I got that for Christmas. But <laughs> I'm trying to remember how old I was. I had to, I was like single digits. Because I have like the uh, like Little Mermaid DS, uh, like a <laughs> Game Boy game on there. Oh my like God. I was young. I must have been like six or seven. Um, Baby like Ori! Dogs. The, the game Dogs. And all this sort of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, I have a regular DS. Well, I have the DS Lite, not the original. I have the DS Lite. I never got a DSi. I skipped DSi. I have the first 3DS, and that was a Christmas gift, and that came with white, too. That was the same Christmas, so I very much remember that. Yeah, with a Z. Yeah, with a Z. Honestly, best game. I like it way better than Nintendogs. Essentially, you were a child that got a dog that, um, to essentially train, as my understanding, as you were like a foster dog parent, because unfortunately the dogs had to leave after a certain period of time. Um, but the whole point was that they like trained and you like cleaned up and it was like, not 8-bit, but it was like, you know, pixelated and it was really cute instead of, instead of like Nintendogs being like the 3D animated and everything. It was really cute. Now I'm gonna have to find a picture for y'all. I will say this, as much as I loved Nintendogs, cause Boy, did I love it and play it every day. But it did get a bit monotonous after a while. <laughs> yeah. It's this game. It's really cute. It's like nice and pixelated in my opinion. And you could like clean up stuff. And you only in like a certain amount of days Aww. or something. And you taught them how to do tricks and everything. And it was just, you have like a family, you eat dinner together, you go to school. It's like really cute. I, I, I've i actually played it like surprisingly recently uh, for how old the game is. Um, I actually, this is gonna make me sad. I actually have, um, I would, I would specifically after a certain amount of time, try to get a dog that looked like my dog at the time. And you could like save them 
and it was like you could like save that dog so it was like your forever dog and so i have my Aww. my first dog my first irl dog in the dog's game <laughs> as a dog in there so it's kind of like oh so i probably will end up doing that again which is surprising well, not surprising but yeah it's a fun little way to to do deal with things um but then yeah i got so white two i got for christmas and i <clears throat> i remember being really cool at the game because now i had a ds with black on it and i had a uh 3ds with white two on it and since they were the same generation you could just trade back and forth between the games so you didn't have to like port them into the new the higher one transfer them up you could just have them and i had been ev training for the first time i that's when i started ev training in black um a whole team and so i just slowly one by one after beating like i think literally the first two gyms with the original pokemon i traded in my lowest which was like level 32 ev trained pokemon and just slowly traded them up till i had my team from black in white two and i just one shot everything because even though they Jeez. were low levels they were eevee trained and and i knew how types worked so literally the easiest game ever i beat that game in 24 hours because i just i just i had no problems with the gym and i didn't have to grind it was just nuts so i feel really epic about the game and then i had x mm. i had x and that's why, I had X as well because I liked Xerni. I like Xerneas, right? Because like he was just so way cool. cooler. The life-giving deer. This is a pretty deer. I, I like, go full I on just aesthetics. Liked it. <laughs> I pick. I pick. Uh, I pick legendaries for aesthetics. I picked white too because I already had black, right? So I didn't want black two and black. Like I felt like that, which is weird because then when I did moon, I still picked ultra moon. So I don't. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did X, and that one I did play for a while after, because with the, um, with the punching bags, uh, EV training method at the bottom of the screen, it was really easy to EV train, so I did, um, but then when Moon came out, that was the first one that I, like, didn't play right away. I, like, waited. <laughs> I just didn't, I wasn't interested, and then... It was like Ultra Sun and Moon are coming out, and it's like, okay, I have to play this game before I can justify myself buying the next, like asking for the next game. And so I played Moon, got Ultra Moon, didn't play it, and then it was like Sword and Shield is coming out, and I was like, well, shit, <laughs> guess I have to play Ultra Moon now. And then I got Sword. It just looked really boring. This is something that that someone had like an interesting, different thought about it. I did not, I didn't like Ultra Moon. I really don't remember Original Moon. I didn't like Ultra Moon because it felt very, uh, I don't say handholdy. I would say railroady, where it was mm. very much like you can't get lost. And while I don't want to get lost, I want to be able to backtrack to wherever the hell I was well, and not have to just- I also want to be able to explore. Yeah, I don't want to have to just progress the story and I approach like a certain portion of the game and it just forces me along. Like, like I want to be able to choose at the speed that I do the story, right? And, and, and so in like an intent of making sure people don't get lost because I remember getting hella lost in Gen 4 and not knowing what to do. Um, oh, same. That but part it, where you have to go around Hartharum City yeah, instead yeah. of going straight to the yeah. gym. Yeah, so weird and nuts. Um, so I didn't like that about uh, Ultra Moon. Sword and Shield, I was okay with the pacing. The one thing, the main point of I have two. I'm sorry, I have two main points of contention. I, I remember your one main point of contention. I, the first one is how. The whole story is like leading up to this whole thing and yada yada. And then you're in the gym, right? You are about to face, what's his name? Leon, the champion, right? Super epic. I really thought that it was fun that it was soccer. Like I did enjoy that. I really enjoyed Team Yell it was funny. You know, it wasn't Team Skull, but it was still pretty fun. And I did enjoy it up until the point that I'm gonna spoil, okay? If all y'all don't want spoilers, I'm gonna spoil. Five, 
four, three, two, one. You're about Run! to face the champion and the mayor, I think he's the mayor, or the governor or whatever, the president, something. He comes up on the screen and is like, Leon, you need to help me now with this like world ending shit. And if you don't come up right here, like I'm going to make it all bad. And Leon's like, hey, dude, I'll help you if I literally just get to battle this kid like like. 20 minutes max you know like please just like i'll help you tomorrow like can't it wait till tomorrow and then uh and then the mayor's like no in a thousand years the world is gonna end and we need to stop it right now and it's like dude that you have a thousand years okay you can wait one freaking day like there is no explanation as to why it needs to be right here right now right at this moment and literally everything could have been avoided and then Leon is like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then the mayor goes nuts, right? And it's like, literally all this could have been avoided if you let Leon have one day or explain why he needed to come right now <laughs> instead of tomorrow. Yeah, literally, why not explain that That's shit? That's my biggest point of contention. The second point of contention I have is that you don't catch the legendary during the storyline. You finish the storyline. And then you have to go out and do more stuff to catch the legendary. I don't know. It just feels like wrong. Like the whole, like, like I specifically choose which game I want to play based on like 90% the legendary on the box. Why can't you let me catch the legendary in the box during the main storyline? Why do I have to play the game and go back to the woods and find it? You know, because it just reminds me of like the lake spirits or whatever, or, like the Moltres, you know, Articuno and like uh, Zap uh, Zapdos in like Gen 4, you know, where you have to like chase everything around and it's just like, ugh. Scarlet is fun like that. I, I don't know what, I don't know if I like that or not. The fact that you get the legendary right away <laughs> as in your bike, uh, we'll see how I feel about that, but so there is a reason for it that i found out mm -hmm. um i don't care about I don't spoilers think that, <laughs> i don't think it's like a super reason basically the idea is that when you come to the end of the game and you do reach the final boss um they prevent you from using any other pokemon that you have caught and trained up to this point so you have to use the bike Pokemon that you bonded with. So it's kind of this moment of everything you've been through together, it's all building up to this one moment. Uh, that That's the angle they decided to go with. Does it make it better? Does that it make is, it worse? I really can't say. I'm gonna say, that is the most upsetting thing I have heard about a Pokemon game. I'm not gonna lie. That It's that one of those bizarre me. choices where I'm it's like... I'm very upset about that. Isn't that what the starter is for? I don't... See, I don't even care about that. I hate the idea... I'm very upset that they will force you to use a specific Pokemon in order to fight a boss. Okay, while they are both good and I enjoy the designs, I dislike the fact that I am now forced to use... I, I, I don't... I don't think I always use the starter to beat, like, the final bosses and everything, because type matters! If type didn't matter, who gives a shit? But, like, typing matters! <laughs> and now you're gonna just make me fight a dude with just you, a Pokemon you don't that I'm supposed to have? You the anime moment where no. the companion you've been traveling with since the beginning helps you in the final battle? See, see, that's what I liked about Pokemon. I guess I'm not a strategic player then. See, yeah, see, that's the difference. What I what I enjoy <laughs> about Pokemon is the fact that there is a level of strategy that you can utilize. That, like, EV training is a thing. I've spent hundreds of thousands of hours on EV training in certain games. And it's enjoyable to me that you can have that sort of mathematical effort put in, know the types off the top of your head. I'm not talking about looking it up. I'm talking about, like, you have learned the typing, you have learned how to look at Pokemon and know, guess what typing they are or figure it out from, you know, like they're super effective or not and the things that they use and beat the Elite Four and beat all these, you know, bosses on your own merit. The fact that I can go to a gym that I know this is a Leaf Gym, I should get XYZ types of Pokemon and make sure or make sure they have these types of moves and other stuff. So that's like the whole point of the game. Now you don't have to do that because if you just level up your Pokemon to insane levels, like it's not gonna die. You know, like like you can be a child and 
brute force your way through it. You don't have to do it the strategic way. But the enjoyable part to me was the fact that it could be strategic, right? Like that you could put in that amount of effort. And to me, doing this with the storyline is like you threw all that out the window. Why bother, right? Like, I don't know. Like, why should it, why should I care about types at all if you're gonna force me to use a, a single Pokemon to defe defeat this thing? Because at least in Sword and Shield, while you did have to use the Sword and Shield um, Pokemon, well, they you didn't really use them. They fought with you. They fought with you. Like, I still could take Entherion or whatever the freaking dude's name was, Eternus, whatever, I don't remember, something with an E, uh, I could still take its type into account and utilize my team to its proper advantages in order to kill it. But if I'm forced to use just one Eternatus, thank you, Eternatus, however you want to say it, uh, you know, I still use my own merit and my own team and my own party structure. And in order to do that, because otherwise it's just like, why you know there's effort i put in beforehand of, of picking out like which pokemon look cool but also fit the types that i should have and like a thing you know like 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 there's effort that you can put into it and then it's just like oh no you're you're forced to kill the boss with this one dude like i hate that out of all the po forget the gripes i had about sword and shield i'm kind of pissed about <laughs> scarlet thing jesus i remember oh, shit. i just infuriated you <laughs> it's it's it, there's also like this internal thing where it's like i remember being in grade school and playing pokemon and playing like pearl like uh, diamond and whatever and people specifically being like if you use the legendary to defeat the final boss you cheated right like you shouldn't like like that's a cop out right like like mm. that was looked down I've upon heard that, that you before. caught the legendary and then you use that to defeat the Elite Four and the Champion, that was easy mode, right? Like, you shouldn't do that. That's that's cheating. Or not cheating, but, you know, that's wimpy behavior, right? That's, that's uh, you know, that's Omega behavior, whatever. And uh, so to be, it's like, no, no, no. You get the Legendary at the beginning, and you're forced to use it at the end. It's kind of like, hmm. <laughs> well, so... Interestingly enough, Thuz, in Thuz, you can believe that all you want. I only technically used it for one game. <laughs> I only technically used it because otherwise, EV training, I oh, find, is or completely... Oh, coming in with the technicalities. No, I, I, find, I find EV training is impossible to do unless you have beat a game. So all the EV training I have done has been after beating a game. The only time it wasn't was my example with White 2, because that's the only time you could and not have to shove your Pokemon up through the ranks, <laughs> up through the generations. So that's the only game I beat. But if you're being honest, White 2 is kind of just black and white origin again, <laughs> but like five years later or whatever it is. So like, I don't know. Did you play white, the black and white 2 in Thuz or just black and white? <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, EV training was just something I sort of did uh, fun <laughs> at the end. Uh, of playing a Pokemon game, uh, so it, enthuse that is my strategy as well. Just play with the ones I like and use them. Again, sometimes my point, I devise the strategy. My but... main point is the fact that Pokemon allows you to do either. I could play my game the technical way. You and Mars could play it, just picking whatever Pokemon looked cute and leveling up, and you know get into a high enough level where you get through the bosses like you could play it either way to me what they did in scarlet means you can't play it my way anymore at the end at least you know that's that's the part that irks me i don't care how you play you know i'm not i'm not gonna tell anybody that using the legendary to beat the elite four is a bad thing i mean honestly i kind of dislike in sword and shield that they make you not able to <laughs> decide to or not because you don't catch the legendary at the beginning you know before it right but it's the fact to me that they're like no 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 you're forced to use the legendary at the end that is what hurts point. me yeah but again you're totally allowed to do it, but you're also totally not allowed to do it. That's the part. They took away my choice. They took away my decision making. And that's Ori's the part that gets freedom me. is gone. Literally though, literally. 
that's the part that that's getting to me is the fact that it's like i i don't get a choice you have to play it this way or no way and it's like ugh. i'll power through it in five years when they come out with when they announce the next game but <laughs> hopefully they actually take the five years i i don't know about you guys i'm really tired of the bombardment of media we've been getting like like so many marvel movies in a single year so many pokemon games like only a couple months apart from each other like please slow down we don't mind waiting i will take say the time to iron out the bugs take the time to make the script good my... make the gameplay good please we will wait for a good product see see my my internal optimism i guess is that the only reason we have this is because we had lockdown right and it's just mm. like they're just trying to catch up right they hit all these projects that were supposed to come out in 2020 2021 2022 and they're just trying to like shove them all in and catch up because they've spent so much money on them already right and they're just trying to get them through and that you know by like 2025 we'll be back to like okay <laughs> we're back in like the slow point where they have to like physically don't have the quote unquote backlog that they had before right man i like, sure hope so <laughs> It's like, otherwise, why are you, like, putting out movies, Disney, that don't have any freaking, uh, like, advertising or any knowledge that anything's coming out? Like, please? Can you... Why? Just... Yeah, it's like producing for the sake of producing and not in the good way. Yeah. Uh... I'm definitely Weird. thinking um, we're we're starting an indie era of a lot of things. If I'm being I, honest. I would agree. Indie I've games, seen... indie movies, they indie are animation. taking off. Oh my god, indie animation has been so indie crazy. animation. I'm definitely. very sad. This is a very sad thing to me. Uh, I watched like a video all about indie animation, and every time I kept waiting, I was like, "Please say no evil. Please say no evil. Just Aww. bring up no evil." They never said anything about no evil. I'm like, "Oh, oh how dare they?" No, you. Betsy Lee deserves better. Ten years, man. She deserves better. She does. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, Anthos, you know, for as good as Encanto was, I don't remember any of the advertising for it. Not, a, not a single trailer. Nor Raya. Nor Raya, but Raya's story was also all over the place. They did not I think that plot line I solely like through. Raya for the visuals. <laughs> I, I like Raya for two things. The visuals are cool. Okay, maybe three things. The visuals... The action scenes, because that's something uh, outside of Disney's comfort zone. So I do respect that. And the music. I will say the soundtrack, pretty damn good. I especially like the dragon theme in particular, but everything else is like, uh, ugh. As, as a storyteller, that movie does hurt me quite a bit. I don't think they're even... I mean, I have Disney Plus enthuse, and, and I don't know about 90% of the shit that's going on. I just sort of... Oh, I See, okay, this is what's funny. This is going to be the last thing I'm going to leave off on because it is midnight 02, and Ooh, I do yep. need to do things. But uh, last thing I'm going to leave off on. This is a very interesting thing that came up to my parents are very frustrated about the fact that everything is moving towards streaming services and when i asked why the biggest point of contention to them seems to be the fact that they cannot essentially scroll through the guide to see what is on and then pick you have to pick first a streaming service and then for whatever reason they didn't think you could like scroll through the streaming service which obviously that's false <laughs> scrolls through the streaming service but you're stuck on netflix right you you watch boy that netflix is not shows, the reasoning i expected right or you watch only hbo max shows or you watch only disney plus shows right you don't get to pick now then i showed them how there is a universal guide for all the streaming services so, you know that's not a problem but you do have to go to like a different website or anything like that I find it so funny because when I go, when I interact with streaming services, I interact with them with a purpose. 
I am not going to Netflix to browse Netflix. I'm going to Netflix to see if it has XYZ show. I'm going to Disney Plus because I know that it has Bluey. I know that it has Tangled, you know, Rapunzel's Adventure. Like, I, I'm i going for this specific show on this specific platform. I'm not here to, like, decide <laughs> what to watch. I'm here to watch that movie. <laughs> and, you know, same with Amazon Prime Video. It's like... No, no, no. I, I, I go there to watch Invincible, to watch Vox Machina. I don't hear about Vox Machina from them. I hear about it from everybody else. <laughs> then I go watch it. So it's just a very interesting little sort of side thing um, about the that. The scope of things has changed. Yep. But, all right, that is where we'll leave off because it is five after midnight. I do need to do things midnight before I get to sleep. And uh, I need Mars to go to bed before the thing. Oh, Styles Ivy, I'm so sorry you joined right Styles at the end. Chameleons oh. are the peak of life. They are if they pretty were impressive. faster, if they were faster, they probably would be. Yeah, but they're kind of slow. <laughs> Not Damn, the Marie, part, you got high standards. The walking part. Okay, I'm sorry. If I have to move that slow, I feel like, I feel like you know, it's just, it's just. I feel like I, I worry about failed. wasting time already as a human, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, thank you. So that was my beat. Thank you, Enthuse. So, yep, this is the last time we'll see you guys until the 30th. Yes. We'll um, see you for again Comic Con on again. Monday the 30th. However, there is a new comic uh, episode coming out this Monday, Monday. This Monday, the 24th. Mars should be. Uh, one step at a time, truly, very, very true. Uh, but Mar should be updating about that, uh, so make make sure she does, okay? Oh, I Her will, <laughs> I will. Come on, um, have some faith in me, please. It's a good episode. It's another one with uh, with the uh, think everybody in it. Yeah, this this one has everybody yes. in it. So um, you'll, it does. You, you it's gonna really be like brilliant. It. Everyone should watch it. Should read it. I guess is the word. And, uh, Watch it, yeah. read it, do whatever you do with comics. I'll maybe be on the Discord a little bit, but not as much as normal. And uh, we'll see you guys around next, uh, well, over a week from now. All right, yes. Guys. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Good night. See you in a week, everyone.